Welcome back to our third tutorial on the audio implementation pipeline using FMOD Studio and CryEngine. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to attach audio triggers to particles. This video is part three of our tutorial series covering the audio pipeline in CryEngine. If you're unfamiliar with the CryEngine and FMOD Studio workflow, please take a look at the first video in this series. The second tutorial covers the audio for animations. These tutorials are also available in written form in our documentation right here, which also covers Audio Kinetics WYs and SDL Mixer. To begin, you'll need to download the tutorial assets from our documentation page here. Once you've downloaded the tutorial assets, we need to make sure that no files that we're going to use are write protected. Open the Audio Showcase folder you unzipped, right click and choose Properties and then clear this read only flag and click OK. In the pop up that follows, make sure this change cascades through all folders and files in the folder hierarchy. Now that that's out of the way, let's go camping. Um, for reasons that will soon become clear. Let's begin by listening to the audio assets we want to use. You'll find these under underscore audio underscore assets backslash FMOD Studio backslash chapter three. You can see that we provided five variations on the crackling campfire sound. We'll use FMOD's multi-instrument feature to randomly choose between these variations. That'll give us a lot more realistic variety of sounds while also keeping the memory footprint to a minimum. So let's fire up FMOD Studio, sorry, and open the audio bin, which can be found under Window, Audio Bin, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control-3. Create a new folder called Particle by right clicking and import all of those fiery assets by dragging them from a file explorer window into that folder. We also need to create a folder called Particle in the Events tab right here under the menu. Now select all of the fire assets in your audio bin folder and drag them into the Events folder you just made. You'll get prompted to decide how to handle these multiple files. What we want is a 3D event with one multi-instrument containing all five of our fire sounds. Then give the event a name that makes sense within your naming scheme. Now in a big game with thousands of sounds, a naming scheme that actually makes the nature of the sound self-evident usually means that these names can get pretty long. But keeping things clear is more important than brevity. In our case, we'd use a name like Play L Global Particle Fire. We use play to distinguish this from a stop trigger. L stands for level, which I've capitalized so you know it isn't an I or a one. And global describes the context in which the sound can be called because we have sounds that are not global. And then just a short description of what the sound actually is. Let's take a close look at the multi-instrument options. When you select the multi-instrument that's part of our fire event, you can see its playlist in the bottom part of the screen, these waveforms right here. In addition to a dedicated volume knob, we can also enable looping for the multi-instrument and its playlist. Activate this button and also activate the async feature. That enables non-time synchronous playback for this multi-instrument. Essentially, that means that together with the activated loop, each file that's part of the playlist will play in its entirety before the next file is triggered. The last step is to add a loop region within the multi-instrument's length so the locator will never stop playing a fire sound. Right-click the multi-instrument and select New Loop Region. Play the event and listen to the result. And watch for the two locators shown. The one within the multi-instrument displays which asset is currently playing. Next, create a new sound bank named, oh, I don't know, Particle. Add the event to it and rebuild all your sound banks by pressing F7. Now let's launch CryEngine and open the Showcase audio level so we can add the trigger to the fire particle. Open the Audio Controls Editor from the Tools menu, create a new library called Particle, or whatever you like, and add the FMOD event. Now don't forget to add the sound bank to the preload library. Save those changes and click Yes on this prompt. Now, if you take a little look around our level, you'll find the fire particle that we've been talking so much about in the middle of the garden on this little island because, you know, it gets cold here at night. Open the particle editor under Tools, Particle Editor, surprise, 
and most likely the fire particle asset will already be displayed on the left side of the particle editor. If not, just use the hamburger menu in the top right corner and select Open. The file we need to open is in the Particles folder and is called Fire. I know, I know. Bizarre. Before we can add our audio trigger to the particle, we need to add an audio component. So right click in the middle of the editor, open the default category, and select Audio. The node we've just added contains a purple audio trigger component. Select that, and on the right side in the inspector, you'll see all of the properties connected to this feature. In this case, we need the Play Trigger option. Click on the folder icon and select our Play L Global Particle Fire Audio Trigger, or whatever you called it. Now, the Audio Trigger feature has more options. Now, because of a bug in 5.6, we can only see them when clicking on any open space in the effect graph and then selecting the Audio Trigger again. Enable the Follow Particle and Stop on Death properties of the component in the Inspector panel. As the name implies, the Stop on Death property means an audio trigger stops playing when the particle itself is disabled. The Follow Particle property causes the sound of an audio trigger to follow the particle as it's moved around a scene. I recommend using these settings when an audio trigger is designed to loop. Lastly, click the brown Lifetime feature and deactivate the Lifetime property from the Inspector window. This sets the value of the particle's lifetime to infinite. Ah, if only were that easy in life. Make sure to save your progress by clicking on the disk icon in the top left corner. And then jump into game and test the results. Attenuation is one of many techniques we can use to control the behavior of sounds based on game information or game states. Attenuation describes how audio changes over distance from the player. FMOD automatically applies volume attenuation to every 3D event. But we can also apply filters or more sophisticated techniques to audibly convey a sense of realistic distance and space. So let's go back to FMOD Studio. When you select the particle fire event and then the master track, you'll see the spatializer effect. The default attenuation distance set in this effect is 20 meters. But instead of using the predefined volume attenuations, we want to create a custom one. So let's deactivate the attenuation by selecting this off button right in the middle of the effect. And to track the player's distance from the emitter, we need to create a parameter. Click on the plus icon next to the timeline tab and then click on New Parameter. Set the category parameter type to built-in distance and set the range to 0 to 30 meters, for example. FMOD automatically added the parameter to this event. You can see that we don't see the normal timeline in the effect window anymore, but only see the parameter now. The scale now ranges from 0 to 30, and there's no multi-instrument on the audio track anymore. Now we can use this screen to define behaviors based on the parameter's value. First, we want to add the volume attenuation again. Right click on the volume knob and select Add Automation. You probably noticed that there's a new track beneath the master track. This is the automation track that's assigned to the volume knob. By clicking on the dotted line, we can add automation points. The expected behavior is that the volume is at 0 dB when the parameter hits 0, and at infinite when the parameter reaches its maximum value, in our case, 30 meters. You can add as many dots as you like between the min and max values, but do keep in mind that increasing points or nonlinear graphs will definitely have a negative impact on your game's performance. We not only want to add volume automation, we also want to change the frequency spectrum of the sound over distance, because that's in fact what happens in real life. Therefore, we need to add a new effect to the master track. Click next to the Master Volumes knob and select Add Effect, and then select the FMOD Multiband EQ. As fate would have it, the equalizer opens with the Low Pass Filter active, which just happens to be exactly what we need in this case. Increase the frequency value to the maximum and right click the value box, select Add Automation, and again, add an automation point at the left side at the maximum and reduce the value on the right side to a value that sounds good for you. Before testing your changes in game, make sure to save your project, rebuild your sound banks, 
and reload the audio engine within CryEngine. Now here's an example of audio triggers on particle effects in our most recent game on Showdown. And that is it for part three of our audio implementation tutorial series. In part four, I'll go over how to add dynamic ambient sounds to a level that are controlled by the player's position and even time of day. Meantime, happy camping.